Okay, these are the supplies I'm using to create this little cute project. This little tin bucket is one I got from Hobby Lobby a few years ago. It is uh, from the spring section. This is the smaller one. And I already put some of the foam in it because I was going to use it for a project, but I ended up, uh, you know, going to the next bucket. And so that's why I'd never use that. I'm going to be using some of these flowers and this greenery, the Spanish moss from Walmart, this brown excelsior from Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to be using this cross. It's from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be Mod Podging this brown wood paper on it. I'm um, going to be using my Mod Podge. This is the bunny I'm going to be using out of this pack. And this is the scrapbook paper that I'm going to be using. Now these cotton bowls are scatters and fillers. And so they're individual cotton bowls that I got from um, Hobby Lobby a few years ago. But I did see them again this year. Uh, anyway, but they're just individual and I thought it would be cute to include those in it as well. So let's go ahead and get started let me show you how to put this together okay I'm going to be using my antique wax and a baby wipe to uh, stain the sides and the back of each of these wooden items And then this is how they look after I have them both stained. So now I'm going to trace out my paper and cut it out. Then I'm going to uh, adhere some um, brush on some Mod Podge. And then we're going to be using the heat transfer method to uh, attach the paper to my wood uh, cross and my wood bunny. So I do try to figure out how, what pattern I do want my, my uh, wood cut out. And I want this pattern. So to make sure that I have it straight, I will tra uh, trace it out on the front side and then cut it out and then adhere it because then I know that my checker, uh, my checks are straight. I did the same thing with my weathered board paper, but since I it had this stand on it, I needed to, uh, I was off camera a bit when I traced it so that I made sure that it was lined up correctly. And so uh, what I'm doing now is just cutting out uh, just with my scissors, just cutting out this pattern, and then we're going to attach it to the board. If you are not familiar with the heat transfer Mod Podge method, what you do is you put a layer of uh, Mod Podge on your uh, the front of your surface that you want to attach the paper. Uh, it has, you know, just a thin layer. It doesn't have to be thick, but I pay special attention to the sides just to make sure that I do have Mod Podge on the sides of my wooden piece uh, so that I, once I adhere it down, that it does not come up. use a mini iron. I'm just using my Cricut mini uh, heat press. That is just something that I have on hand. And uh, so I just want to match up my paper to, uh, to my wood cut out. And then what I do is I use a piece of parchment paper and and then I just iron this on. I do the same thing with this cross and just using my iron just to make sure that I get all along the edges of my wooden items. Then just using my uh, Distress ink and a finger dauber, I am just going to go around the edges and uh, just to give it uh, just some distressing and just kind of give it some shading and some shadowing for my cross. I'll do the same thing with my bunny. Next I'm going to add some doodling 
with my black Sharpie marker, just going around the edges. I am not uh, being any, like, you know, just kind of making some lines. They're not touching. I don't want them to touch. I like the more whimsical look. And so I feel that this just really kind of adds just the whimsical look uh, to the projects. I will also add some black splattering to my projects just with this stiff brush, a stick, and some acrylic paint. Then I will go back over it with some white splatters, some white acrylic paint just to give it some white splatters. It stands out a little bit more on the cross than it does on the bunny, but I know that they're there. For my can, I want to make sure that my uh, ladle or my um, ha uh, handle <laughs> handle is in the front. Uh, just be, it's just a personal preference, and so I'm just taking some of this uh, green moss and just kind of putting it in uh, into the container, just kind of spreading it out a a bit before I figure uh, out where I want my uh, cross and my bunny to go. So now I have my cross. So I want my cross to go about right there. And uh, to tack that down, what I'm gonna do is I am going to use some hot glue. Just tack that there. And then re-spread my moss back in there, on there rather. I can use some U-pins. These pins are in the floral section if uh, I want some of the pins to kind of hold it down, you know, hold my moss down. Get a little bit more, just like that. For my bunny, I got a Jenga block or a tumbling tower block and I just glued it to the back. I'm not gonna worry about uh, antiquing or staining that because the grass is going to uh, be covering that up anyway and then I'm just going to glue that down right here uh, so that it looks like my cross is right here and then my bunny is right there. So then this is how our bucket arrangement is looking so far. I'm just putting in pieces of the brown excelsior moss that I got from Hobby Lobby just sticking in a few of those where it kind of looks like dirt or more natural when it comes to uh, a little arrangement like this. As much as I wanted to, I've decided not to use these cotton bowls because they I really can't get them to look correctly. Uh, so what I'm doing is just snipping off some of these uh, flowers that I got. These I got from Walmart and these right here, these pink, with the greenery is from Hobby Lobby. So this is how our arrangement is looking so far, just by sticking in those uh, white flowers there, one back here, and then two of the pink right here. Okay, I have one of these uh, tags uh, that I've tea stained. I'm just using my fine Sharpie marker and I'm going to write Silly Bunny, Easter is for Jesus. used my fine, ultra fine Sharpie marker to add some doodles around the edges of my tag. I'm going to be using these trims and ribbons to make a, a messy bow. So for my messy bows, what I do is I cut about, I don't know, three and a half uh, or four inches of the ribbon. Uh, these are probably cut at three and a half. Anyway, so then I just crisscross them just kind of layering the uh, widest to the skinniest 
And for my messy bows, I don't usually worry about uh, doing a lot of dovetailing. I just kind of cut them off at an angle. Then I get the strongest hold with a pipe cleaner. Uh, other people, some people use jute, some people use, you know, whatever you could get your tightest hold with. I just gather it in the middle, put the pipe cleaner around it. Usually I try to match the color of the like uh, project that I'm using. Sometimes I'll use my needle nose pliers uh, to twist it even tighter so that it gives me that pop that I want for my bow. And so if the pipe cleaner, you know, worries you, I, I mean, it's okay because for me, it's not going to bother me because, uh, you know, I can see the pipe cleaner. I can always put a extra piece of uh, lace or something, other kind of ribbon around it and just tie it in a knot so that it doesn't uh, look, uh, you can't even see it. Just giving options. I've been getting some questions on messy bows, so that's why I'm just sharing these tips that I use for myself. So you can just tie an extra piece of lace or some other kind of ribbon for your bow, and then now you can't even see the pipe cleaner. For my tag, what I did is I put just a little white dot in the uh, happy dots of each of the letters. Then what I'm going to do is just to age it or distress it a bit more um, just to make it look old and crumply. I just kind of bended it different ways. And then I'm just going to take my distressing ink, my vintage photo distress ink. That is my favorite just to go around the edges, just to give it more of an aged look. So I took another uh, U-pin and uh, slipped it underneath the pipe cleaner. And then I'm going to slip the U pin in between the hole of my tag and then that's what I'm going to stick into the foam for my tag. Actually that did not work out the way that I wanted it to so I just put the one U pin in the bow, stuck that in and then I put a separate one here just stuck it in between the uh, in the hole so that it held my sign and uh, because the first time the bow kind of covered up my writing and I didn't like that so then I just kind of pull some of this rib these ribbon tails so it kind of masquerades the U-pin. 